Edward Charles O'Bannon Jr., similar to other players with his resume, ran into issues, to say the least, with the NCAA, creating one of the most memorable legal cases in college basketball history. What started out in simplicity as a case based on image rights transformed into a class action antitrust challenge of the entire NCAA amateur model. Understandably, when people hear the term salary cap, majority of minds automatically jump to the professional leagues and associations. Yet the type of salary cap that we'll be talking about today is in the form of scholarship and post-collegiate compensation. O'Bannon, a UCLA power forward, among with fellow colleagues at the time, sued the NCAA for violating the Sherman Antitrust Act. Now, for those unfamiliar with the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890, it was a United States antitrust law that was passed by Congress under the presidency of Benjamin Harrison, which regulates competition among enterprises. According to LeggyWorks.com, and I quote, the law attempts to prevent the artificial raising of prices by restriction of trade or supply. Innocent monopoly, or monopoly achieved solely by merit, is perfectly legal. But acts by a monopolist to artificially preserve the status or nefarious dealings to create monopoly are not. The purpose of the Sherman Act is not to protect competitors from harm from legitimately successful businesses, nor to prevent the businesses from gaining honest profits from consumers, but rather to preserve a competitive marketplace to protect consumers from abuses. Now, let's take a look at our lead plaintiff and what their intent of this case was. Edward O'Bannon grew up in South Los Angeles. In his early years, graduated from Artesia High School. While attending his senior year, O'Bannon averaged 24.6 points and 9.7 rebounds. This led the team to a 29-2 record and eventually a California Interscholastic Federal Division II win. Bannon was named the MVP of the Dapper Dan Classic, as well as a McDonald's High School All-American, before eventually being honored by the Basketball Times as the National High School Player of the Year. Bannon was set to attend University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Yet this plan fell through when the basketball program was placed on probation due to recruiting irregularities. The player instead pursued his collegiate career at UCLA, which in turn brings us to our case. Bannon versus the National Collegiate Athletic Association, aka the NCAA. As a Sixers fan, I've seen countless injuries happen that can put a player's career on hold, let me tell you. O'Bannon's situation was similar to this. A mere six days before the official start of practice, he tore his anterior cruciate ligament after a dunk landing that did not go according to plan. O'Bannon wasn't supposed to walk again, let alone play. A graft that he received from a cadaver 18 months after injury allowed him to not only walk but to continue his career. The plaintiff suit argued that, quote, Upon graduation, a former student athlete should become entitled to financial compensation for future commercial uses of his or her image by the NCAA, end quote. The legendary Oscar Robinson, who held the triple-double record before it was outdone by Russell Westbrook, joined this class action suit as well. According to Sports Illustrated's NCAA ordered to pay $46 million in Ed O'Bannon's lawyer fees by Scooby Axon, a judge ordered the NCAA to pay $44.4 million in attorney fees and another $1.5 million in costs to the lawyers for the plaintiffs in the Ed O'Bannon Case Action Antitrust Law suit against the NCAA. O'Bannon and 19 others sued the NCAA, claiming the organization violated United States antitrust laws by not allowing the athletes to get a share of revenues generated from the use of their images in broadcasts and video games. In August, U.S. District Judge Claudia Wilkin ruled that the NCAA cannot prevent athletes from selling the rights to their names, images, and likenesses. NCAA rules prohibit any student athlete from receiving money from, the, from selling their likenesses. Wilkin ruled that the NCAA could cap payments to players at no less than $5,000 for every year of competition. The institutions could put the money in a trust until the athlete graduates or exhausts his or her playing eligibility. The NCAA appealed Wilkins' ruling to the 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco, and a three-judge panel heard 30-minute oral arguments from both sides. No decision was made immediately. Judge Nathaniel Cousins said in his ruling, obtained by USA Today, that the plaintiff didn't succeed in winning every claim, but the unsuccessful claims contributed to the decisive success by laying groundwork for the eventual trial victory. 
Now, my question to everyone is, this is one of the most controversial topics in NCAA uh, history, and as I said before, it's one of the most controversial um, cases. This case definitely opened the door for a lot of other case, similar cases to this, and also a lot of topic of conversation. There's been a lot of rules as of lately to the NCAA uh, guidelines and, and things of that nature. So I'm genuinely cur curious to see what you guys have to say about this topic and kind of what you think, what side you're on, and, and if you can understand both sides. I'm very keen to listen to anyone that can argue the defense on this. If you're for the NCAA and you totally understand their standpoint and you totally agree, I'm genuinely interested to hear your point. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I'll be doing more like this, basically based on legal and things like that, but I'll also be doing um, other podcasts. Just focus on some other topics, some fun topics surrounded around basketball, of course. So I hope you guys had a great day. I hope you're having an amazing Monday. And I'll talk to you on the next podcast.